In today's tutorial, we'll build a scene with a shifting grid using the Subdivision SDF2D operator. The focus here is going to be on building the scene, so we aren't going to get into the theory and mechanisms involved. If you're interested in that stuff, check out the videos in the RayTK intro series. We'll be using RayTK version 0.32, so make sure you're using at least that version. Check the video description for a download link. Start by dropping the toolkit talks into your project. I like to do that at the root outside of the main project comp, but you're free to do that wherever you want. First, we'll set up the renderer. Open the palette with the Alt R shortcut and create a Raymarch Render 3D. Add a null top connected to the first output so you can see the rendered image. Select the renderer and open RayTK's Editor Tools menu with Alt Shift R. Under Add Camera, we're going to choose Look at Camera. On the camera, set the FOV angle to 70. Select the renderer again and open the Editor Tools with Alt Shift R. And then under Add Light, choose Point Light. On the Point Light, we're going to set the position to 4, 8, and 4. Now that our 3D renderer is set up, let's step out of the 3D world into 2D. The SDF that we'll be using is called Subdivision SDF 2D. So open the palette and create a subdivision SDF2D operator. With the subdivision SDF2D selected, open the editor tools with Alt Shift R and then choose Colorize 2D SDF. Then with the Colorize operator selected, open the tools menu again with Alt Shift R and choose Add Render 2D. Then add a null top connected to the first output of the render 2D so you can see the rendered image. On the renderer 2D, decrease the zoom to around 0.3. Then to make things a bit easier to see on the colorize SDF 2D, for the inside period parameter, set that to around 0.02 and then do the same thing for the outside period. The subdivision SDF2D creates a rectangular area and splits it into cells, and then it splits those cells, and so on. On the subdivision SDF2D, increase both parts of the side to 2. These parameters control the total size of the rectangle. Try adjusting the pattern shift parameter to see how it shifts around the divisions between the cells within the rectangle. We'll animate this parameter later on. Because of how it splits the cells, they will never overlap regardless of what the shift parameter is. Decrease the iterations to 3. This controls the number of times that it divides the space into cells. Increase the minimum size parameter to 0.05. This setting limits how small it is willing to split cells. Once a cell hits this size, it won't be divided any further. Try changing the seed. This setting is used to control the randomization of the splits. Any change in the value will result in a totally different layout. It's like the seed parameter in a noise chop or top. Now let's go back to the 3D side of things. To convert the 2D SDF into a 3D one, we're going to create an extrude operator. So open the palette and create an extrude and connect the subdivision SDF2D to its first input. Then we're going to connect the extrude to the first input on the renderer. At this point, we're seeing something, but it sort of looks like it's just one solid box. But if you look really closely, you might see some dividing lines in there. 
It's doing this because on its own, the subdivision in SDF2D fills each cell with a rectangle that's the size of the cell. So going back to our 2D visualization, we can see how it's showing the inside parts of the shape in red with this al these alternating lines, and then the outside area as green. So the whole area inside any of those cells is filled in. To make this more useful in 3D, we're going to convert it to just the divisions between the cells. Create an onion operator. And we're going to insert that after the subdivision SDF, connecting it to both the colorized SDF 2D and the extrude. Increase the thickness to 0.02. This operator takes an SDF and produces just the surface without the insides. Let's go back to the 3D renderer. Now we can clearly see the divisions between the cells, with the cells themselves on the inside being empty. We've gotten the rectangular shape working in 3D, so now we'll repeat it in a grid on the X and Y axes. Create a modulo 2D and insert that after the onion, connecting it to both the colorized SDF 2D and the extrude. Now this does extend the shape on both axes, but things look kind of broken. And that's because the modulo 2D is taking only the center area of the SDF and tiling that. On the subdivision SDF 2D, Right-click the size parameter and choose Copy Parameter. Then go to the Modulo 2D, and for its size parameter, right-click and choose Paste Bind. Now, whatever size that you set the subdivision to is the size that the Modulo 2D will repeat, so you'll always get the full rectangle within each repetition. At this point, we have an infinitely repeating grid of subdivided rectangles. Go to the camera and we're going to temporarily increase the Z position to 8 to get a wider view. Uh, with this wider view, we can see how the layout of the cells within each repetition is exactly the same. To vary it, we can use the seed parameter, which changes the layout, but we want it to be different within each repetition. So to do that, what we want is to provide it with a number that's going to be different for every cell and doesn't repeat. We can use a cell coordinate variable from the modulo 2D to give us the row and the column coordinates for each cell. Select the modulo 2D and open the Editor Tools menu with Alt-Shift-R, and then under Reference Variable, choose Cell Coordinate. Try connecting it directly to the seed field input on the subdivision SDF 2D, and we're going to get an error. If you middle click on the subdivision SDF 2D, you'll see a message about how the input does not support return type vec4, meaning this input doesn't know what to do with a vector, it's just expecting a single number. One approach would be to just use either the row or the column. On the variable reference, on the field parameter, open the dropdown and choose Y. Now, we're not getting an error anymore, but you may notice that we're getting the same layout for all repetitions in the same row. So the ones in this row are different from the ones in this row, but they're still all the same across that row. Now we could also change it to the X, but then we'd end up with the same problem with columns instead of rows. What we need is a way to take those two numbers and combine them somehow to produce a single number, but without using a predictable pattern that we'll be able to see. Fortunately, as of version 0.32 of RayTK, there's an operator designed to do exactly that. On the variable reference, the field, 
open the dropdown and choose value to go back to having it produce the full vector. Open the palette and create a hash field operator and insert that between the variable reference and the subdivision SDF seed input. Hash field is used to produce pseudo random values with either a vector or a float input, producing a random ish either vector or float result. The type of input and output that it uses and the technique that it uses depends on the function parameter. There are a lot of options here, and in future releases, there's going to be more documentation about how to make choices within this list. But for now, we're going to use UE4 rand fast. This function is based on one used in Unreal Engine shaders. It uses two parts of an input vector, in this case, the row and column of the cell, and produces a single number, which works for the seed input of the subdivision SDF2D. Now each repetition gets a different layout. Well, let's go back to the camera and set the position back to five on the Z axis. The next step is to fill in the pattern a bit. We'll do this by blending it with a plane. Create a plane SDF and set the axis to Z. Then select both the extrude and the plane SDF and open the editor tools with Alt Shift R. And then under combine SDFs, choose smooth union. And then connect the combine operator to the renderer. This looks okay, but it's wiping out some of the detail. So on the combine, decrease the blend radius to around 0.2. Next, we'll replace the default material. Create a modular mat and insert that between the combine and the renderer. Then with the modular mat selected, open the editor tools menu with Alt Shift R and under add diffuse, choose Orin Nyar. Then on the diffuse contrib, we're going to increase both the roughness and albedo to one. Finally, we'll add some animation. First, we'll animate the pattern shift. Select the subdivision STF2D and open the editor tools with Alt Shift R. And then under animate with speed, choose pattern shift. Then on the speed generator, decrease the speed multiplier to around 0.2 to slow things down. Next, we'll shift the Modulo 2D to pan over the grid. Select the Modulo 2D and open the Editor Tools menu, and then under Animate with Speed, choose Shift 2. And then on the speed generator, drop the speed multiplier down to around 0.3. And that's it for our scene. To recap, we're starting in the 2D world using the subdivision STF2D to create a shape with a rectangle divided into smaller rectangles. We're using the onion operator to convert the grid of rectangles into just the outlines. Then we're repeating that in a grid using modulo 2D. We're using the cell coordinate variable from the modulo 2D to feed into a hash field that's producing a randomization value used as the seed for changing the layout within the subdivision SDF2D. Then we're jumping into the 3D world by extruding the 2D SDF along the Z axis. We're then combining that with a plane using smooth union to smooth out the blend between the intersections. Then we're using a modular mat with a diffuse contrib as the material. And finally, we're rendering the scene with a Raymarch Render 3D. That's it for today. Check out my Patreon to support RayTK development. You'll get early access to tutorials, exclusive scene downloads, and more. Thanks for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe.